Hey everyone, hey Dima. Hi Davy, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. So we have a new release. Right, 141 and 142. Yes. So let's first of all dive in to our very famous tip of the day. Today's tip of the day is about non flaky assertions. Auto retrying assertions is what you should be using, right? So they're the ones with a wait and expect and things like to have text, to be visible, to be checked. Make sure there's an await before it. Then you have polling, which is, you know, okay, sometimes expect a poll, expect to pass, and flaky, don't use if you unless you really have to, but try not to use it. Wait for timeout, wait for navigation, wait for load state, or anything with an expect before the await, um, because they're flaky. So anything you want to add to that, Dima? Yeah, I think I never use the flaky ones, right? We've seen someone do wait for a timeout and then uh, check in text content. No, you should do to have text. It will already drive for you right away. Yeah, and check our, our docs for a whole list of all the auto retrying assertions. So let's jump into the agenda. We have for you today new tags and annotations. So tags outside of titles, annotate skipped tests. And then we have screenshot styling, where you can apply styles only for screenshots, and some experimental locator handlers, where you can get rid of overlays that randomly appear. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive straight into our new tags and annotations. And for that, we have a demo. OK, so here we've got a test. And the previous tag syntax for tags was basically doing an at with whatever you want, say at login. So this is tagging an at login test. All right. Um, if we run this test, npx playwright test, I'm just going to call it tags, that's the name of the file, and that's going to run the test, um, three tests, because I'm running it on the three browsers. And then I will just run my report command to show the playwright report. So here we have our tags, right? And you can see add login. But we've also got login here, right? Because you extracted it out to make it beautiful, which is so that's lovely. A tag. But the tag right. is here in the in the title. So what is a tag? A tag is just a way to to be able to easily filter your tests, right? So here I've only got one test, but I could have wrote login here. And imagine I had 100 tests. I would only find the test that had login. All right, so, so you can filter by them. Yeah, it's a way for like just filtering. And you could have more than one, right? You could have login, and you could have uh, fast or whatever. It could be slow. Right, that's the old syntax. So uh, this one is the new syntax. And instead of putting it here, I'm going to remove it from here. What we do is we add in an object. Mm -hmm. And here we write tag. And you can see it here in the uh, in the documentation, which is just up here. We've got the tag here, right? And we can put in um, at smoke, for example. Let's just let's do this one actually. Smoke. Yeah, let's do a smoke test. Yeah. That's something new. I've never seen that. So this is our new tag syntax. All right, and let's just run the test again. And this time, let's see if you can see the difference between our previous tag syntax and our new tag syntax while looking at the report. Uh, right? I can see more tests right away. <laughs> of course, you can see more tests because there's more tests. Um, All right, I can see the smoke, right? But it's not in the title. It's not in the title, exactly. So it's a lot cleaner. And you asked about filtering earlier. Look, now I can get rid of all those smoke tests by just filtering for a login, for example. Or you can or, get smokes. Uh, yes. Exactly. But this is a lot, a lot nicer, right? Just the smoke um, here and not in the title. That, that's great. Love it. So let's take a look at annotations, right? I've already created this. The annotation here is a way of adding some extra information into your test. And you can see here I've added in just next to the title an annotation with a type of my issue and a description with a link to a GitHub issue. Now, this is something we do in Playwright, right, Dima? Yes, that's uh, we always annotate our test with an issue so that later on you can uh, see uh, the history in the issue, so why the test was edited and what is the testing. So let's open up the report so we can see this uh, extra information, right? So we'll open up here, and we can see my issue. And we can even uh, click on the issue 
uh, on that link and go straight to that particular issue, which is kind of cool. Nice. So compared to tags, you don't see them in the in the list, right? You only see them when you click on the test. Yeah, so you, exactly. You have to go into the detailed view of the test. Mm -hmm. And if I want them to see to see them in the list, I, I'll do a tag. Exactly. So if you wanted to filter it, for example, you would do a tag. OK, that's the difference. I see. Now, something interesting. Uh, previously, we this this is not something new. It's just a new syntax. So there is another way of doing it. But previously, it was inside the test. And then what happened was, um, if the test didn't get run, like imagine you skip the test, then the annotation wouldn't get run, which makes sense because it's in the test. So what we did was we put the annotation outside of the test body. Yeah, nothing will run in this case, right? Because you skipped all the tests. I skipped all the tests, but the title will still run, as in like it will still get me the title, and it will I still see. get me the annotation. So now when I do our show report, we have We're going to be in the report. Exactly. So look, my issue is here. It says skip. There's no information because we skipped the test, but we have the link and we can still go to that issue if we wanted to. So oh, that's great. That's great. I love exactly. it. Exactly. So all my skip tests will still have the links. Exactly. Wonderful. So just a recap quickly. Um, at fast at login is the tag, and that was previously in the test. And now we can put it into a um, into a tag object right after the title. And the first one is still supported, so no breaking changes there. You can still do that if you prefer it. But it's nice and cleaner in the new syntax. So I use and it because I prefer the syntax, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. nicer. It's cleaner. I think so. But you don't have to refactor all your tests if you don't want to, so don't worry. Yeah, you just keep the old way as yeah. long as you like. But the good way, the new way, is also good for doing like in a describe block, right? So you can just put that in there, um, and it's nice. Oh, so and all the tests will get the tag. Yeah, that's exactly. nice. So much cleaner. Pretty clean. Um, and new annotation. So your annotation, again, right just after the title, create an object with annotation. And that goes just right there. And then when you skip your test, you're still going to get that annotation. So again. Um, new syntax, much nicer. And that's the end of that one. So now we're going into screenshot styling. Interesting. What what does it mean? You're going to make means, all your screenshots pink? Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, sure. No, it, it means like when you're taking a screenshot and you're basically like, you know, testing uh, against screenshots, you might not want all of the things to show. For example, um, in this example, I've got a canvas here. And uh, I don't want that to show. Or an iframe, for example, a YouTube video, um, advertisements that are coming up in the page, because they All might the make time, the taste yeah. flaky. Um, so you only want the screenshot of your actual website, right? And not right. all this extra information. So here you can have an expect to have screenshot with a style path to your screenshot.css file. And um, I have some example, beautiful CSS here. Um, so iframe display none, data screenshot transparent. And then the page is saying data screenshot transparent. So in my test, it's not going to show that canvas or that iframe or anything else I want to add. Right. This is similar to what we had with the masks, right? But here you give you have more control. Like for example, you can remove right uh, border radius, right at the end. Yeah. It's like, you can have so it's much. All fun. your screenshots is query. <laughs> or you can turn it all pink if you want it. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> all up to you. Or you can just remove the iframes as David did here. Yeah, because you don't want to test all those YouTube videos, right? <laughs> That's right. So next up is Locator Handler, which is experimental. Do you want to tell us about that, Dima? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, let's uh, uh, zoom out a bit and talk about the overlays, right? Uh, sometimes you see those uh, overlays uh, in the page, like the sign up uh, dialect, where you, you just go to the page and it asks you to sign up. And sometimes they are unpredictable. And uh, during testing, they get in your way, right? We at Playwright believe that you should test uh, deterministic uh, behavior of your sites, right? So the ideal scenario uh, and the, the best scenario you would test here is to disable the overlays during tests. If you can, do some uh, testing build of your site or something like that. And then you just do not have to deal with them. And that's uh, very good. Uh, if that's not possible, maybe you can make them predictable, like uh, a cookie banner that always appears when you go to the site, right? And, like it has to. <laughs> So yeah. if it's predictable, you can just handle it, close it, and then uh, continue with the test. But if all of the above is not possible, what just are you going to do? Don't write any tests. <laughs> I guess that's the way. 
<laughs> but you know, if you still want to write some tests and you should, right? Uh, then uh, we'll see what we can do about it. Okay, but first of all, this is the predictable overlay. Yes, right? If, if your uh, overlay is predictable, you just, you know, go to the page and then you wait for the overlay and just close it immediately before doing whatever, right? Like a cookie banner, you just click the close button there. And Which is what a user would do. Yes, this is what the user would do. It's there, you click it, you go. This is what we recommend. This is the best way. It's not flaky. It will always work on your test, right? Sometimes though, if that's not possible for whatever reason, this is not something we recommend. We, but uh, here is the new feature we introduced, which is Add Logator Handler. So what we do here, if, if you can see, is uh, you uh, playwright waits for a text signup on the page, right? When when playwright sees the signup, it will stop the execution of the test before like doing any clicks and do you and call your uh, handler, which in this case we're uh, gonna click on the close button, right? And hopefully, if you click on the close button, the overlay will disappear, the sign up dialog will uh, go away, and then Playwright will continue with the testing, right? So this is the <clears throat> how it's supposed to work. Uh, this feature is still experimental. I think we'll uh, find some, you know, edge cases where it doesn't work or uh, something like that. So give us your feedback. This is why it's here. Uh, try it out if you need to. If you have some unpredictable things, give us your feedback, and we'll improve it for the next race. Sounds good. Okay, so to summarize our release, we have better tags and annotations, so tags outside of your titles, and you can annotate your skip tests. Screenshot styling, where you've got style path option to have screenshot, and style path in the Playwright config itself. And then the experimental locator handler to get rid of those overlays that randomly appear and are really annoying and hard to test. Yeah. And uh, give us your feedback on that one when you've tried it out. Make sure you update to the latest version, npm i-d at playwright slash test at latest to get all the latest features. Um, always update to the latest version. And there are some miscellaneous. And if there's any breaking changes, check out the GitHub release notes for all those, um, or our website as well, which has um, the release notes in there too. And that is it. Make sure you are reading our documentation, following us, on GitHub, make, give it a GitHub star as well. Star us if you um, if you haven't already done so. Join us in Discord for happy hours. Follow us on YouTube and on Twitter. And anything else, Dima? Uh, yeah, always keep testing. Yes, I love it. Always keep testing. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Dima. Everyone. See you in the next release. See you.